Hey kids, welcome back to the second episode of What Killed the Presidents. I'm Zach Ferguson, and if you haven't already watched the first episode, why the Trump not? It's genuinely the longest that anyone's talked about Millard Fillmore in over a century, and that's the kind of fact you can take to the bank. This week, we're right back in it with America's 14th president, Franklin Pierce. Now, there really is no way around it. Franklin Pierce drank himself to death. After struggling with alcoholism for much of his adult life, Pierce developed cirrhosis, that's chronic liver damage secondary to the alcohol toxin. He likely died from decompensated liver failure, as the toxic products normally metabolized by the liver built up in his body and poisoned him. This is not just a historic cause of death. Alcohol today kills over 2.5 million people worldwide. James Buchanan, not to be confused with former Art Attack presenter and I kid you not, heavy metal guitarist Neil Buchanan, died of a chest infection. Abraham Lincoln, you might recall, was shot in the head at point blank range. Not cool, John Wilkes Booth. If you're a student of medicine and you're interested in trauma, I'd suggest looking up something called the trimodal death distribution. The model suggests that deaths from untreated traumatic injury fall broadly speaking into three different categories. Deaths within minutes due to catastrophic brain injury or interruption of major blood vessels, deaths within hours due to blood loss, and deaths within days to weeks due to infection. Lincoln died several hours after being shot, likely due to a combination of massive hemorrhage from his head wound, meaning not enough blood was getting to his vital organs, and due to raised intracranial pressure as blood filled his skull and compressed his brain. There is some debate as to whether Lincoln would have survived if he'd had access to today's trauma care and early brain surgery. But for the time, Lincoln's wound was mortal. Andrew Johnson was Lincoln's successor. He survived the presidency, but died six years later due to a stroke. Ulysses S. Grant, the Civil War general turned president, died of throat cancer. I suspect a squamous cell carcinoma of his larynx. Smoking 20 cigars a day probably didn't help, as tobacco smoke is now recognized as a key risk factor in developing this kind of malignancy. Perhaps strangely, he remains one of only two presidents to have died of cancer. Rutherford B. Hayes was famous in his time for winning the election despite not winning the popular vote. Remind you of anyone? He died of a heart attack. A heart attack, remember, refers to a myocardial infarction. That's death of heart muscle due to a blockage in the arteries that supply it with oxygen. Again, it's a very common cause of death and classically presents with crushing central chest pain. Ugh. The term heart attack sometimes gets mixed up with the term cardiac arrest which leads to some confusion when we're talking about causes of sudden death. A cardiac arrest is when the heart stops beating, whatever the cause might be, while a heart attack refers to a specific pathology that may cause this. Someone who dies suddenly has had a cardiac arrest, but has not necessarily had a heart attack. Just wanted to clear that one up. We continue our trip through the cemetery with James Garfield, a president so notable he appears in the may also refer to section of a cartoon character's Wikipedia page. Like many presidents, Garfield was shot, once in the arm and once in the abdomen. Unlike Lincoln, however, he didn't die right away. It took him three months to shuffle off this mortal coil. His death was likely due to infection. That's the third part of that trimodal death distribution we talked about earlier. You see, the doctors decided that the best way to get the bullets out was to stick their fingers in the wound and wiggle them about. Not cool, guys. He developed an abscess and died. Had he lived today where, you know, we wear gloves and stuff, he probably would have survived. Anyway, let's speed this up a little bit. Chester Ray Arthur died of a cerebral hemorrhage, Grover Cleveland died of a stroke, and Benjamin Harrison died of pneumonia after contracting the flu, this bacterial lung infection being a recognized side effect of a viral illness. William McKinley was shot twice in the abdomen and died eight days later, likely due to an infection growing around the bullet that remained inside of him. Again, with today's imaging, antibiotics, and improved trauma care, he may well have gone on to do more than just found a glee club. His successor, Theodore Roosevelt, was famous for inventing the teddy bear and less famous for inventing the Furby. Okay, so that's not true. You know, but it's true though. Roosevelt got shot in the chest and survived, although his brush with a bullet came after he left office. The bullet got lodged between his ribs, and the doctors just kind of, like, left it there for the remainder of his life. Uh, kind of cool, guys? So how did Teddy die? Well, old Bullet Breast woke up one night, unexplainably and suddenly breathless, and died not long after. His death was chalked up to a pulmonary embolism, which makes sense when you look at the facts. A clot would have formed in one of his legs before detaching and going rogue. A process called embolization. 
The embolus can then sneak up through the heart and into the lungs, where it gets stuck again. If massive, a PE can cause sudden death as it causes obstructive shock. The heart just can't beat anymore because it's all clogged up. Poor Teddy. That's a wrap for us this week. Uh, take home message, if you ever find yourself in the 19th and you get shot, stay the hell away from doctors. We'll only make it worse. Join us next week when we'll be covering 20th century Beanox like Gerald Ford and William Taft. It's gonna be wild. Until next time. Four score and seven years ago, a bunch of guys created TV, the greatest YouTube channel in the history of this republic. And you should subscribe to that channel. I'm off to the theater.